Welcome to the Council of Elrond podcast. I'm Dave and I'm joined by my brother Johnny and we are here to briefly discuss our thoughts on the new trailer that just dropped for the game Tales of the Shire. Uh, don't forget to please give us a like and a review and let's straight away get into it. Johnny, you literally watched the trailer about 10 seconds ago for the first time before we recorded. Yeah. So, uh, well, first of all, how are you getting on? How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm grand. Uh, I'm, I was a little bit under the weather recently, so apologies for if my throat is a bit rattly. I had a bit of a, a bit of the flu, so um, apologies for uh, for that. But uh, I'm doing well now. I'm doing good. And yeah, as you mentioned, like literally you were about to click record on this and I said, wait, hang on, I haven't watched it yet. So <laughs> I went back and I, and I watched the trailer. So I'm, it's very fresh. You're going to get a very fresh opinion now. It's very fresh, but also I've I've gone back and watched it a few times. So at least I've uh, looked at some finer details. You've done your and, homework at least. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. It wasn't a huge trailer as you've just seen. Um, it only mm. took you like a minute to do but also not just your sickness but Johnny's dedicated and traveling on the road so we don't have the microphone so apologies for that but don't worry um, normality will resume in the future hopefully so yes before we mention our final thoughts and expectations of the game I just wanted to quickly run through what we do see in the game and Johnny I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll rehash your memory from 30 seconds ago to what you have just seen so I've already forgotten <laughs> So the tra the trailer opens up and we get a narrator and I assume, I can only assume that's Gandalf speaking or it's a, an older gentleman and he speaks of there are many tales of Middle Earth and then we also get to see a little female hobbit, I think that it is, walking through the Shire. This could possibly be a protagonist but as the game suggests it's probably going to be, uh, you'll probably pick like if you want to be a male or female, maybe you'll design your, your hobbit like uh, in the sims or something like that we get a we get a nice glimpse at the graphics and the art style uh johnny first thoughts on on graphics and art style what do you think um yeah they're they're interesting they're like kind of quirky um kind of like maybe more models to be aimed for like younger uh younger ages like kids but i think also like i mean if you're a fan of that art style maybe anybody could could go for it like so um it's definitely, I, I think it's going to be very different to what we're expecting from the, the upcoming movie, The War of the Rohirrim. I think that's going to be a bit more maybe realistic. This one seems a bit kind of like, you know, um, almost, well, kind of like childish Disney mm -hmm. sort of like, you know, massive eyes and like proportions that just don't make any sense realistically, but kind of endearing as well. And uh, yeah, I thought it was quite interesting. It's very cute. colorful. Very cute. Yeah, yeah. I liked it was the scene where she, the main character, she was kind of like skipping along through the Shire, and then while she was skipping, it would switch from like spring to summer to autumn mm -hmm. and uh, to winter, and it was it was quite nice. It was just like all these like, but all kind of like warm feelings inside, and uh, you know the warm colors being used, and uh, yeah, just loads of color. That was my that was my first takeaway. Yeah, I think. Um... That is, no one really knows what this game is going to be. And I, like, I haven't, hadn't a clue. Like, is it going to be, mm. you know, it's not going to be action. It's not going to be survival. It's not, like, no one really knows like what it's it gonna is. Be like, it looks like, well, again, it just looks, again, I'm just going off very first, first impressions here. It looks like it's going to be kind of like a Sims sort of a game where, mm -hmm. you know, it was saying like, you know, um, create friendships and, you know, decorate your home and all this kind of stuff, you know, build a bonfire. I don't know. Like, <laughs> things like you're just kind of going around and you're, um, you're just sort of, I don't know, creating your home and your little base and I don't know. and maybe A little bit like Minecraft or something. Yeah. I'm guessing. Yeah, or Age so, of Empires. Or yeah, so I, I don't exactly know what the mission or the aim of the game is, but we do see a little bit of the game mechanics in, in this trailer. We see a hobbit fishing um, and foraging friendships and then literally foraging after that. Uh, we see her. We see her hand picking some mushrooms, going to a local vendor, cooking, and then eating. And then, yeah, we get a big scroll that says "Decorate your home." Uh, we see vegetation growing, and we see, like you already mentioned, seasons changing. So obviously, this is going to be a feature of the game where I don't know is it going to affect change? Like maybe you can't forage during the winter or whatever. And then what pops yeah. up is 
explore Bywater uh, in in a scroll. And the first, the first time I watched this trailer, I think I was kind of half asleep. It was You're last like, night. Explore by like via yeah. water. Yeah, and I was like explore by water. And the next the next clip wasn't her in a boat, and I was like. Hmm. And I was waiting for it to say <laughs> explore by land and then explore by air or something. Air. I was like, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, what's that about? And I was like, oh, by water. Right. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. But that does yeah, that does kind of suggest that it's not going to be, even though it's called Tales of the Shire, we're not going to get the entire Shire, which is a little bit of a disappointment. But by water features most of the important stuff like um the Green Dragon, and... That's where you and I will be spending our time. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Actually, Nerd of the Rings suggested Matt had a had a deep dive on this, or he broke down the trailer as well, and he suggested that perhaps maybe they'll bring out some DLC that'll have other areas in the Shire, but, like, I think that was just... that was He was just riffing, and I don't know how that would go down well if, if they kind of release half a game and then bring out a bunch of DLC. We, we know game d- developers yeah. aren't very popular when this happens. Um, but yeah, finally we get a glimpse of a festival and what I assume is the party tree, but I don't know. It's just maybe their interpretation of the party tree. And then we get Gandalf in the flesh and plenty of other yeah. hobbits around him. So this does confirm that Gandalf is in the game. Um, well, I assume it's it's him. It's hardly going to be anyone else. It could be, it could be Solomon. Yeah, yeah. But um, no, he's wearing grey. He's wearing yeah, it was kind of like purpley grey, but like a kitty yeah, yeah. cutie grey. Mm-hmm. But this would also suggest the timeline of the game to probably be based not after the War of the Ring, but before because or maybe like around Bilbo's birthday or between Bilbo and the uh, Frodo taking the ring from the Shire. So, um, so do you think do you think then that it's going to be like based because like, I was kind of wondering, well, again, from just the brief uh, trailer that we've got. I thought we're probably going to just get maybe a couple of figures like a Gandalf and, you know, mm-hmm. maybe even Bilbo might pop up or something like that. But I think we're probably not going to get any sort of like story that's going to be connected to anything really. It's just going to be sort of completely invented storylines of different characters who would have been living alongside maybe our heroes and kind of like what we saw in the Third Age game mm-hmm. where you meet just like a random Gondorian and you're like, oh, is this like... A cheap version of Baromir or something. Yeah, it's just like, like no, it's just some Barathor, random dude. Was it? <laughs> Barathor, yeah. So he, he's just like a random Gondorian soldier, and it's kind of like at first I was like, oh, I want to play with the real characters, but then it's kind of like, oh, it's cool. These guys are just living their own lives in the same kind of timeline, or maybe it's fifty years before, or one hundred and fifty years, or something like that. But I don't know. I'd be interested. I mean, I, obviously, it's always nice to have a couple of little characters that you know. And again, Gandalf's one who's just been knocking around for a few thousand years, so it's like, ah, oh, we'll stick Gandalf in. That's fine, but. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe there's only maybe elves or wizards who are the only long-standing characters that might feature in this game because yeah. other shorter living creatures, maybe a golem might appear because again he's quite long living as well. But um, I don't know. What's your expectation? Are you expecting to meet like Frodo and the boys, for example? Well, uh, yeah, I don't know about big characters like Frodo and Bilbo, but like we definitely have seen Gandalf. But but the difference mm-hmm. between this and the Third Age game is the fact that the Third Age game there was a lot of rights up in the air, and you know they didn't really have the net the the rights to other characters. I think they could only they could only go off the movie. So you do bump into like Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli in the Third Age game, but. They, ha- they couldn't just take other book characters. They had to invent other game characters because... And so what's only the story of the movie. rights for this game? So this, I, I think this this has everything. I think, um, right. l- luckily, we got an interview from our friend Matt again from Nerd of the Rings. And he was he was down in New Zealand with all the Kiwis. And he was talking to the, the game developers. And in that interview, one of, one of the guys mentioned that... They have a lot of the book characters, so I don't know, is like Torbold, Ho- Hornblower going to be there, or, you know, uh, maybe <laughs> Sam's Gaffer, or some some of the characters from the, the book itself. He said that there's going to be plenty of those characters, but there's also a couple of invented ones, but those invented characters feel grounded and as if they should be in the Shire, so it's not kind of taking the piss. <laughs> so <laughs> for lack of a better word but um but yeah I, I i don't know as far i've never played any of those games like minecraft or i said minecraft i think it's minecraft minecraft or animal crossing which a lot of people it's are comparing mind. <laughs> yeah 
Um, so I don't really know, like, I don't know firsthand where the enjoyment comes from if you're just, like, vibing. I suppose a lot of people are saying, like, this looks like pure vibes. I'm like, I get that, but I haven't lived it yet. So, yeah, I don't know. It's it's going to be interesting. Um, one thing I'd like to mention as well that I absolutely love the, the music that was in this trailer, which sounds very whimsical and hobbity by nature. Yeah. Uh, cool. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump straight to to asking you the big question. Judging from this trailer and this trailer alone, is this a game, Johnny, that you will be purchasing and playing? Um, I don't know. And to be brutally honest, I'm gonna say right off the bat, it's not the type of game that I would usually go for. And also, the fact is, I'm not a huge gamer. I'm not. Yeah, I, I don't play games as much as you do, so. I only kind of play the odd game when usually on your recommendations when you're like, oh, you have to play this game because you're going. You usually like, you, I get your hand-me-down games and you're like, oh, you have to play this. I'm like, okay, fine. But uh, How the turntables? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, years ago it was the other way around, folks, but now I'm old and I don't game as much anymore. I have to just live the real game, which is the game of life. <laughs> and uh, But if I have time, I, I do like to uh, play. I like kind of first player games and I like kind of games where you've got quests and um, I mean I loved the original uh, Lord of the Rings games and the Third Age game again this one again as I said it looks like it's kind of aimed for a younger generation um, and it's kind of had that kind of very kidsy vibe after it's just from the animation and the style but I could be way off and again I'm just going to not do my own research I'm just going to wait for you to play the game because I know you'll <laughs> yeah. go out and get it and I was kind of like waiting for you to be like, oh, it's class. You got to get it. I'd be like, okay, whenever you're finished, give me a go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I did have a little note here that I, I said, I think you would hate this game because we've often talked about before. I think we've talked about it on the podcast as well. How, for example, a game like Red Dead Redemption 2, which is unbelievable, has a brilliant story. It's it, like the graphics are insane and you can do all sorts of fun stuff. And I'm always saying you can sidetrack your, yourself with like shopping and fishing and styling your character, which you don't care about. And it seems like this is what this entire game is about. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, it, seemed, it seemed to be like that. And I was like, when do I start the actual game and the missions? So, <laughs> yeah, like, no, no, I'll just keep, keep trying on outfits. And I'm like, no, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, um, but no, I'm definitely not going to knock it until I try it because it, there's a huge market for this kind of stuff and it is supposed mm. to be aimed at a younger audience. But some of the some of the positives that I've taken away from this game is, uh, first of all, Numero Uno is its Weta workshop that are the developers. Uh, Numero mm. Dos is that in Matt's interview from Nerd of the Rings, he talked with the producers and the developers of the show and you could see some of the insane enthusiasm from the guys that are behind this and like I, I i would say that for me the one kind of shining light and the one kind of saving grace of this the fact that what, what really does attract me to the game are the names of the people that are behind it the people that are involved yeah 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 that's that's definitely a big one um and it's not just you know obviously some of some of the old games like return of the king two towers and uh the third age like they're just created by ea and i don't know what kind of tolkien lore or like Tolkien professors were involved in those games at all but they were all bangers but this one actually has mm -hmm. like people that are through and through Tolkien fanatics um numero tres I sounded really really bad there numero tres tres I can't even say it anymore um tres. yeah it's it's a different game it's not meant to be about the graphics which you know the graphics are maybe even the storytelling which is probably primarily what i would go for in a game like how how good does it look visually and what mm. kind of story does it tell and also how fun the action is and none of those are components of this game so i think it is just about adventure and pure vibes and chilling and yeah. just being like cozy and cute a lot of people are describing this as like a cozy game which i've never yeah. really cared about too much in a game but like i'm willing to take that step folks it does seem like something that you could play and you just feel good afterwards you're like ah that was nice now like you, yeah you have to make a little make a little cup of tea and sit down and play this game kind of thing. exactly yeah and just i think you just vibe with the music and a lot of the music it, does I, seem great i did enjoy that a game that i've never played and we've talked about it before by the way check out our 
what is it games of middle earth podcast because we discussed loads of games and that and one of the games oh, is lord yeah. of the rings online or lotro and i think that it's similar vibes it's, it's just like a hugely expansive game where you walk around and you can like chat to people like i think there is, there is fighting and stuff but it, it's more so just like traveling and adventures and exploration um so i think that's where this game would have pulled a lot of its material from or at least its inspiration um another thing is we must note that this is alpha footage so graphics can potentially improve but i i wouldn't imagine that'd be that much and finally my last positive thing to take is that on the previous trailer where it showed the live action book we saw signs like in that we saw a little art that showed the green dragon ivy bush by the way ivy bush is a is a pub that we've discussed in an upcoming podcast and also mm. by water of course so like it does look like it's going to feature a lot of places that we haven't seen in Middle Earth yet that that are so synonymous with the books. And I think that's going to be cool. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. And again, it's just it's like anytime there's any sort of opportunity out there that you can slip into Middle Earth and especially <laughs> if, like based around the Shire. Like, I mean, I am all, always up for that. I think so. As, as we said initially, that this isn't the kind of game that would normally grab my attention. Just the fact that it's got anything to do with Middle Earth and the Shire is kind of really something that would be hard to, you know, stay away from forever. So I was kind of like, I'm not going to rush out and buy it, but uh, I'd say it on the line. I'll definitely be giving it a go. Yeah, when it when it's slated like the Gollum game and goes down to like five ninety nine in your thrift store, um, I think this game, to be honest, I imagine it might be similar to the likes of Spyro. Do you remember playing Spyro back in the day? Where you yeah. kind of where you explore and you adventure and and then you'll have like Gandalf stationed in in your local village and he'll be there to give you some tasks and items to find and secret places to explore so it could be cool and i don't know if it's going to be one of these things where you go around collecting rings or coins and but i think it could be fun yeah yeah i reckon so i think um my my opinion is that i definitely need another trailer and and a price before confirming whether i'll buy uh, but I would imagine it's in the 40 euro range. And I think my curiosity will get the better of me unless I hear loads of early reports that it's that it's terrible. But like, let's let's keep positive. Um, As you said, from the enthusiasm that uh, all the people working on it are coming out with, it seems like it's, it could be good because I think the Gollum one, there wasn't as much enthusiasm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That's That really seemed like a fan project. When I go back and look at like even the Twitter page, it seemed quite... I don't want to be bashing other games, but it, it didn't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Mm. Anyways. The less we say, the better. The less we say, the better. I think I'll definitely be giving this one a chance anyways. But Johnny, uh, I previously vaguely hinted at an upcoming episode. What is happening with the mm. podcast? Mm? What do we have in store for the folks at home? Um, mm. So, uh, yeah, Dave and I have been... Um, we have been on a bit of a hiatus and we are aware of that and we apologize and uh, life kind of got in the way there for a little while and uh, we were not able to get our weekly podcasts out and we weren't able to do them to the standard that we wanted so we just had to basically take a uh, a break there so but in the background we have been delving greedily and deeply into the <laughs> lore again once more and we have uh, been kind of working away in the background and we are working on um, some new little bits and pieces for all the listeners so hopefully we'll be able to share them with you all soon very good you dirty dirty lore and when is it coming out <laughs> what's the date the date is to be confirmed redacted <laughs> yeah <laughs> similarly to the tales of the shire uh we don't have a release date just yet, but we will have one soon, so stay tuned. And I can kind of confirm that it'll be 2024. No, it'll definitely be 2024. <laughs> <laughs> Some people had to go and, you know, buy laptops and move countries and get new jobs and get married and, you know, selfish. Selfish things. Different bits and pieces, yeah. <laughs> we won't mention who that was. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that's all from our very quick review of the Tales of the Shire trailer. So drop us a comment on what you guys thought of the trailer and let us know if you plan on getting this on your console. We'll see you very soon, guys. All the best, guys. 